The US Government Accountability Office, GAO, published its annual report assessing weapon systems in mid-June 2024, stating that the hypersonic air-breathing missile program will undergo a critical design review, CDR, in 2025, and transition from rapid prototyping mid-tier acquisition to a major defense program in 2027. However, the CDR will showcase the initial version of the missile, which will undergo refinement during the testing program, thereby transforming it into a rolling CDR. Production could begin as early as 2027. Raytheon is the prime contractor for HackM, while Northrop Grumman is developing its scramjet engine. The development of HackM will cost $1.9 billion, including 13 test missiles, associated developments and materials, and an undisclosed number of additional ready missiles post-testing, ensuring residual combat capability. Lockheed Martin's missile and fire control for the AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon, ARW, whose tests are mostly complete, shares a similar scheme. However, the US Air Force has intentionally not given a definitive answer on whether it has plans for further ARRW testing or production. Unlike ARW, a boost glide hypersonic weapon, HAP is an air-breathing, scramjet-powered system with a greater range. It is capable of altering its course and route to the target, complicating defenses against it. The Air Force has long preferred a HAM because it is smaller than ARW, has a greater range, and can be carried on fighter jets, whereas ARW is limited to large platforms such as the B-52 bomber, from which all its test flights were conducted. The FY 2025 Air Force budget documents describe these two missiles as complementary. HACM began its development in FY 2022 as part of the Air Force and Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency's DARPA Joint Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept, HAWC, which served as a prototype for HACM. In 2022, Raytheon emerged victorious over its competitors, Boeing and Lockheed Martin, to develop the weapon. According to officials, the carrier aircraft, booster rocket, payload, and guidance system, as well as the interstage connecting the cruise missile and the booster, are new for HACM and make it functional, according to the GAO report. The 2027 production date depends on what capabilities the Air Force is willing to accept and whether production capacity is ready, according to the GAO report. The report states that although the program launched without a formal schedule risk assessment, it received approval in June 2023. The previous work has shown that this type of information is important to help decision makers make informed decisions about starting a mid-tier acquisition program. The report includes the likelihood that the program will meet the statutory goal of demonstrating a prototype in an operational environment and providing residual operational capability within five years of the program's start. U.S. Air Force leadership instructed HACM to be acted upon as quickly as possible, and the risk assessment schedule is likely to indicate a higher level of risk, the oversight agency noted. The project completed the requirements, acquisition strategy, formal technology risk assessment, and independent cost estimate before the official program launch. The Air Force approved HACM requirements in November 2021, but the GAO reports that the Joint Requirements Oversight Council has yet to approve these requirements. However, this may occur before HAGEM becomes a major defense program. The agency stated that the US Air Force believes that the critical technologies underlying the HACM design were either immature or approaching maturity at the time of program launch, but the program expects them to be fully mature by the end of the rapid prototyping efforts. In addition to the iterative design approach, the HACM program uses digital design tools and all digital design reviews, the GAO report states. However, the program is not currently creating a missile digital twin, though this may happen later. Program office officials told GAO representatives that digital reviews are challenging due to the large number of tools, licensing restrictions, limited computing power, and logistics needed to make them available to a large number of program stakeholders. GAO officials suggested including continuous user feedback in design cycles, which the program apparently does not plan to do. Program officials stated that users may provide some feedback during operational testing, but this will primarily serve to facilitate system learning by users rather than inform the design, the GAO report notes. The Southern Cross Integrated Flight Research Experiment, a joint US-Australian project, 
is integrating HAKE-M as all Pentagon Han hypersonic projects compete for access to limited facilities and test ranges. According to the GAO report, several HAM tests on Royal Australian Air Force FA-18 aircraft will take place in Australia. The Air Force budget documents refer to Skyfire as a prelude to HAM. The FY 2025 Air Force budget states that HAM activities will include continued design and integration with F-15E and F-A-18E F aircraft, as well as free flight testing of HAKEM prototypes. The HAKEM research and development budget allocates $516.9 million for FY 2025, $448.6 million for FY 2026, $274.1 million for F-2027, $200.8 million for FY 2028, and $202.6 million for FY 2029, marking the completion of development. Now, do you think the US Air Force will choose Hackam over ARW? We discuss such interesting topics every day. Please like, share, and subscribe for more such stories in the future.